saying biblical names wrong. I mean, good biblical morning. Welcome back to Bible Read Along. We are in the middle of, that way, Joshua chapter 16. And I have been reading a lot of names that I just cannot say. That's why I was making that joke. And today there's more names that I just cannot say. So that's where we're at. Um, thank you so much for joining us. If you're here, say hello in the comment. I am here live in person with my wife, Ashley. I'm Daniel. We love each other. We love God. We love the Bible. We love... I'm tired today. And we're tired today. We are tired today. I don't know why. I went to bed early. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Well, just a... I think it's just been busy. Things have just been busy and we are tired today. But we're here and you're here. So thank you for watching either live with us or watching later on on Facebook or YouTube. On YouTube, you search Bible Read Along. On Facebook, you search Bible Read Along. On YouTube, we only show up under channels. So if you are searching there, go to channels and then search Bible Read Along will pop up. Um, go join us over there too. We are almost at 50 people on YouTube. Um, Facebook is much larger, but lower interaction numbers. So just watch it where it's best for you and say hello when you're watching. That's all we ask. Yeah. All right. Let's pray and let's get into things today. There's a few people in the comments already. Um, Morning Mindy, she says she's so tired too. I think part of it is, I know it's been a little while now, but part of it is daylight savings time for those that are in Alberta and Western Canada and things. Um, even when you gain an hour, studies have shown those weeks, usually the week after daylight savings and the end of daylight savings is, um, yeah, people are more tired because it throws your body off. It throws your rhythm yeah, off. Technically I'm getting an extra hour of sleep. You are, but it just throws people off. There's more, more vehicle accidents in those weeks usually than... Yeah, it's just interesting. That's something I learned in driving school, at least. What I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what they told me. Um, morning, Phyllis. Morning, Mindy. Morning, Matthew. We are so glad you guys are here. And we might have a few more people join us. We might not. I think people are weird named out for today. But uh, let's pray. And then we'll go through what we've learned so far and into today's reading. So, Father, we love you. And we just thank you for your presence here. Thank you that that we can connect with you through your word. And so, Lord, we ask, would you connect with us today? Connect with our hearts and minds. Open us up to truth and change us to live Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why are you sad? I don't know because Mother Nature. <laughs> because Mother Nature. That's, that's a good reason to be sad. Um, all right. Joshua, what's happened? Well, Moses is dead. Joshua's in charge. Then we've really just been sharing the stories of how they conquered the land. And then the last few chapters have been how the land was divided among Israel. So today, chapter 13. Oh, I didn't set up. I just sat in 16. I mean, what did I just say? 13. Not 13. We are well past 13. We are on 16. And if you're ready, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Tell me you're ready. Let's go to the word of God. Allotment for Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim, these are Jacob's sons or Joseph's sons. Um, here we go. Allotment for Ephraim and Manasseh. The allotment for Joseph began at the Jordan, east of the springs of Jericho, and went up from there through the desert into the hill country of Bethel. It went on from Bethel, that is Luz, crossed over to the territory of the Archites in Ataroth. We learned about these already. Descendants westward, descended westward to the territory um, of the Jephletites. As far Jephletites. As far as the region of Lower Beth Haran and on to Gezer, ending at the Mediterranean Sea. Again, um, Barbara has posted some great pictures. There's things available there that show kind of a map of where things are. So Manasseh and Ephraim. 
the descendants of Joseph received their inheritance. Now, why is Joseph important? They keep referring to Joseph. And you got to, we've already walked through some of this Genesis, Exodus, Joshua is what we've read in the Old Testament in order so far. Um, you know, Israel was captured by Egypt, taken as slaves. Um, they began to grow and multiply. And back when they were captured, more so in slavery time, was, was Joseph. Joseph was sold as a slave into, and Joseph is the one with the, the multicolored coat, the, the technicolor dream coat, and, um, you know, was sold into slavery in Egypt. And he was the son of Jacob, also known as Israel, who was the son of Isaac. No, Abraham, Isaac. And who is the son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yeah. So Abraham. So that's how it relates. That's the 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 great grandfather Abraham, Isaac, his son Isaac, Jacob. Jacob had twelve sons, the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph was sold as a slave, became the prince of Egypt, and it said at the end. Jacob and his family came to Joseph. They got food. He welcomed them. They all came. At that time, there were 70 of them that came to Egypt and began to develop. They were given land and began to develop. Now, in that, though, they still became slaves. And 100 years later, um, you have Moses on the scene. Joseph has been forgotten. Not even 100 years. Anyways, my timing's off today. But... Um, then you have Moses come on the scene, new Pharaoh. They didn't know anything about Joseph and his sons are still there. And that's why they're given land because they were promised it by Moses. So that's kind of where we're at. I hope that makes sense. Like I said, we're tired and I apologize. Verse five, this was the territory of Ephraim according to its clans. Here we go. The names begin. The boundary of their inheritance went from... Adaroth Adar in the east to Upper Beth Haran and continued to the Mediterranean Sea. From Milkathath on the north, it curved eastward to Tanath Shiloh, passing by it to Genoa on the east. Then it went from Genoa to Ataroth and Narar, touched Jericho and came out at the Jordan. From Tupua, the border went west to Cana Ravine and ended in the Mediterranean Sea. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Ephraimites, according to its clan. It also included all the towns and their villages that were set aside for the Ephraimites within the inheritance of the Manassites. They did not, and this is the end of the chapter, they did not dislodge the Canaanites living in Gezer. To this day, the Canaanites live among the people of Ephraim, but are required to do forced labor. So the people, they let people live there, but they are required to do forced labor. Let me see if I can find a map. Joshua land allotment. Let's just see what we can see. Okay, Manasseh is actually a big area so we see here i just looked up joshua land allotment map um you can see here in this one manasseh this is the big area here for manasseh up in the top right you can't see my mouse sorry i didn't realize that um ephraim is down here right by the dead sea over to the mediterranean sea Kind of in the middle, you can see Ephraim right next to Gad and Dan. So these are some of the, the allotments of land. Um, again, we see this is a big area. This is a large area. The Jordan is up here, kind of right in the middle now where you see Jerusalem. That's on um, the Sea of Galilee. You see to the right of it, the Dead Sea. The river that connects between them is the Jordan River. That's where they crossed into. Jericho was right in there. Um, yeah, so this is some of the land. I believe I have that right. Is Jericho up higher? Yep, Jericho. Sorry, the Sea of Galilee is up here at the top. And there's the Jordan River that goes all the way from that top down to the Dead Sea. 
Um, so they crossed in here. Jericho's up up a little higher, up near Issachar. So this is kind of the land allotment. Um, again, it's just kind of cool to know the history. This is really, Joshua has become more of a history book than stories. It is, it is the history. It's the going through the tribes, the names, the land that they possess. And that's it for today, guys. Just a super short one. Um, and we will get into more. Should we read the next chapter? 17, and it's mostly, I think we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll just do one chapter today. So there is a couple of points in this next one yeah. that I might want to yeah. preach on a little. So we'll wait. Um, but that's kind of it. That's the history. Sorry, I don't have more for you. That's it. But maybe what we'll do is we'll show Home of Hope today just to put in a little time here. Um, I'm going to get flagged because I haven't changed this yet to different music. A different music so it's going gonna, it's gonna to flag. But I think the music still works for you guys on Facebook. So here we go. Here's Home of Hope. And then we'll just say goodbye at the end and call it a day today. These numbers that you see on the screen are a couple years old, so it has actually grown since then. This is the Dream Center. Kenya. $50 a month can completely change a child's life in every way. Your donations and sponsorships are being used to entirely transform lives. Be a part of something bigger. Donate or sponsor a child today. So there's Home of Hope. You can visit them at homeofhope.ca. I love this organization. I miss Africa. I hope to one day get back there with Ashley um, and go and, and enjoy it. And and not only enjoy some time, but serve. Serve the people. Serve the Lord and see what God does. Um, I have actually been there. I've been to Kateli, Kenya. I have been to Rwanda. I have been to um, the border of the Congo, the Dominican of Congo, um, the Republican, Dominic Republic of Congo, whatever it is, Congo. Um, yeah, and this is real. Like the money that you send there is changing lives. Um, I got to go see the food carts we buy food carts for moms single moms we teach them how to do business they run a food cart sometimes they just sell eggs sometimes they sell like sausages um and that's kind of and people buy it as a snack on the street and that helps now pay for their family provide for their family uh the the babies that they rescue we actually the dump so when you when we say they're rescuing babies from a dump it literally is a garbage heap and around it is the slums where almost a million people live in the slums of this dump. And then they throw their babies away. And so we have teams that actually go in and regularly search. They regularly find babies. And the government of Kenya works with them. And instantly, as soon as we find them, Home of Hope, I'm saying, um, as soon as Home of Hope finds them, they are taken to the hospital, given the medical attention they need. Then after several weeks in the hospital and healing, they're brought to the Dream Center when they're healthy and raised. And they're raised there being taught classes and 
being taught math and and language arts and some of these things that they'll need in the world and some of them get sponsored to go into other private schools and <coughs> excuse me it's really it's it is i can't even i was i'm i'm a little touched by it actually this week because in my facebook memories was coming up it was in 2018 that I, at this time that I was in Africa. And um, so all my memories are coming up and I'm seeing the kids, I'm seeing the dream center, I'm seeing the church services and shower. yeah, my itty bitty shower. I that. Yeah. I had a shower. That's a whole other world too. And then, um, yeah. So I spent almost a week in Kenya and almost a week in Rwanda, I think it was. And then a week of travel. Um, so I was there, I was gone a total of three weeks, but uh, it was it was life changing and I can't wait to go back. Pastor Brian, the founder of Home of Hope, he always says it this way, if you can't go, so. So um, give, give in to Home of Hope. You can go vis visit them at homeofhope.ca and check it out, see what they're doing. Go find them on social media. There's a whole bunch of Home of Hope groups. Go see what they're doing. I think that's it for today, guys. A um, few comments. We'll, we'll go to the comments here. <coughs> oh, Fighting a little bit of a cold. Okay. Hello, friends and family. Bible read-along family. So we got Ashley, Matthew, Mindy's there. Phyllis, good morning. Mercury, Trish. Um, we are glad you're here and ready. Barbara, yes, we love the posts from Barbara. They've been helping a lot. Uh, was Ephraim a good man or a bad man? We, As far as I know, he was good. He was the son of Joseph who served the Lord. Um, he's still around, or at least the Ephraimites and um, Manassehites, <laughs> Manassites as whatever they were called. Um, those are the, the clan that comes around them. Um, they are, they're there, they're serving the Lord. They're with Israel. They are doing what God has required. Good morning, Carolyn. Morning, Valentina. We are so glad you guys are here. So that's it for today. Just a quick one, but thank you for spending some time with us this morning. And we will be back tomorrow with Joshua 17. And, uh, we got a busy, busy weekend ahead. I'm um, doing some celebrate recovery stuff, but things are things are exciting and uh, just glad what God's doing. And uh, we would love to hear from you guys, too. Do you have testimonies? What's God doing in your life? How are you obeying the call of God on your life? It's going to look different than my life, different than Ashley's life. But what are you doing to obey the call of God on your life? That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much. And we will see you tomorrow. And that's the plan. That's the plan. Bye. Oh, music's already going. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.